Hey everyone, thanks for coming to our session. This is the introduction session to Longchaining Tick Nongjo Commentaries by Campbell Sodagi. This session will cover below agenda. First is an introduction to Larunga Buddhist Academy and Campbell Sodagi. Second, I would like to share a short video, Lama Gadi, who realized Dzogchen. Then we will discuss the lineage transmission chart. And then I would like to cover some of the history of the book, The World of My Perfect Teacher. Last, we'll discuss the stages of practice. Larunga Buddhist Academy was established in 1980, funded by His Holiness Jimen Ponsor Rinpoche. It is located in China, Sichuan province. Since then, it became one of the largest and most influential centers for the study of Tibetan Buddhism in the world. As you can see in this picture, there's a lot of red cabins this is where the practitioners live. In peak time, there are more than 10,000 practitioners live there, study Buddhism full time. This is a Grand Sutra Hall in Buddhist Academy. The practitioners are learning Mahayana, Sutrayana, Vajrayana, etc. Now I would like to share a short video for Lama Gadi, who realized the Dzogchen from other. For a special reason, in 2012, we went to Dzogchen, the holy place of Dzogchen. On the way to the cave where Pachu Rinpoche wrote the book, The Word of My Perfect Teacher, we met the old Lama Gadi, Lama who was practicing in retreat. And the compassionate Lama gave us supreme blessing. On November 11, 2013, the old Lama passed away and appeared in the incarnation of a rainbow. The Dharma was incredible. In this video, you can see a yellow book which is the Tibetan version of the word of my perfect teacher. Um, we will discuss this book in the following slide. Kampo Sudagi is one of the spiritual leaders in Nyingma lineage. As the Vajra Guru and the Dzogchen lineage holder, Kampo is empowered to transmit Vajrayana teachings and practice Kampo translated a lot of um, teachings from Tibetan to Chinese. So uh, for here, we are the followers of Kampo Sodagi. We translated a lot of teachings um, from Chinese to English. Kampo emphasizes a systematic approach of listening, contemplating, and meditating on the Dharma. He has been teaching over 30 years. If you're interested, you can find some of the campus teachings on camposodagi.org. Tibetan Buddhism lays much emphasizes on lineage transmission that has been passed on until today from the Buddha to our teachers. It carries great power continuously and without interruption. Without receiving such transmission, one is not allowed to teach others however wise and skilled he might be. It is very unique in Tibetan Buddhism.
This is our lineage transmission chart. Our lineage is Nima lineage. The teachings are transmitted from Buddha Sakamuni all the way down to Guru Padmasabhava, who is the founder of Tibetan Buddhism, and continue transmit to Rongqin Rajan. He's a great Dzogchen master. He also is the author of preliminary practice instructions of finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind and continue transmit to Jinmei Limba and Jinmei Gawi Nayugo, which is the perfect teacher of Pachu Rinpoche and continue transmitted to Pachu Rinpoche, which is the other of the word of my perfect teacher and transmitted to Mipo Rinpoche and to Jimin Pomso Rinpoche, who is the founder of Larunga Buddhist Academy and continue transmit to Kampu Sodagi and Kampu Chochun Loju. As you can see in the left side, Kampu Jimin Pomso is the teacher of Kampu Sodagi and Kampu Chochun Loju. Both campos are very famous um, in the world. And in Western countries as well. They came to um, Western countries in a few years ago and give a lot of public speeches. And um, a lot of uh, videos are available in YouTube as well. The word of my perfect teacher was composed by the great Nima master, Pachu Rinpoche. The work is an explanation of the Longchen Nintik Nojo, the preliminary practices from the Longchen Nintik cycle of teachings discovered by Jimmy Limba. This famous commentary is a complete faithful written record for the oral teachings Pachu Rinpoche received directly from his teacher, Jinmei Gawi Noyugo. I would like to cover some histories of the masters. So Pachu Rinpoche is an enlightened master who, though he lived in the life of um, Vangabhand, was one of the most illustrious spiritual teachers of the 19th century. His principal teacher was Jimmy Gawi Nuyugo, a great master who was one of the foremost students of Jimmy Limba. From Jimmy Gawi Nuyugo, he received no less than 25 times the teachings on the preliminary practice of the Longchen Nintik, as well as many other important transmissions. From time to time, he would write a text of his own and these treaties were later collected into six volumes of his writings. Among them is the word of my perfect teacher. Jimmy Gawi no Yugo was one of the foremost disciples of Jimmy Limba and a teacher of Pachu Rinpoche. Jimmy Gawi no Yugo was born in 1765 in Tsukuka Valley. As a child, he experienced a strong desire to go to the solitary places and devote himself to meditation. In his youth, he made a pilgrimage 
to Lhasan and Samyen and other sacred places and received instructions on Dzogchen, but was still obliged to accompany his older brother on business trips. The dishonesty he encountered on such trips filled his mind with revulsion for Sansara. Later, when his brother died at age of 18, eventually fleeing his home, he went to see the third Dzogchen Rinpoche. Before traveling to central Tibet with Bachu Gongchu Ratzun, at Samye, they met with the first Dorapchen Rinpoche, who advised them to visit Jimelimba. When they reached Turinjan and met Jimen Limba for the first time, Jimen Gawi Nuyugo felt incredible joy. They received empowerment, transmissions, and detailed instructions on Dzogchen. In carrying out Jimen Limba's instructions to visit Sacred Mountain of Tari and to meditate there, Gawi Nayugo suffered extreme hardship, but was sustained by the memory of his root teacher. During a six month retreat, he realized the ultimate nature of mind through the blessing of the Lama and the accomplishment of the Eden. After several more retreats in East Tibet, he returned to the Tsarenjong and experienced once more the great joy of seeing the omniscient Jimelimba, who invited him to stay for three years. He explained frankly that he had to go back home because of obligations. He returned to come and did many years retreat around Dzogchen Monastery and in Jakoka, and had many extraordinary experiences. For 20 years, he stayed in caves in the Trauma Valley in Upper Jakoka, eventually become known as the Hermit of Jakoka and Jatama uh, Lama. He lived under extremely austere conditions sometimes under a rocky ledge or even out in the open. As advised by Jimmy Limba, he devoted the entire latter part of his life to teaching whoever came to listen, giving empowerment or meditation instructions to all who were devout and sincere. During this period, he gave Pachu Rinpoche teachings on the nojo of Longchi Nintik no less than 25 times, as well as teachings on Tsongren practice and Zopachimbo. His instructions on the preliminary practices are recorded in Pachu Rinpoche's famous words of my perfect teacher. The word of my perfect teacher is one of the best loved introductions to the foundation of Tibetan Buddhism, constantly recommended by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama and other eminent teachers. It provides a detailed guide to the method by which an ordinary person can transform his or her consciousness and set off on the path to Buddhahood, the state of awakening and freedom. The first half of the book contains a series of contemplations on the frustration and deep suffering of samsara. The round of existence based on ignorance and deluded emotions and 
enormous value of our human life, which provides a unique opportunity to attain Buddhahood. The second half explains the first steps of Vajrayana, the diamond vehicle whose powerful methods of transformation provides the distinctive character of the Tibetan tradition of Buddhism. The stages of practice. The words of my perfect teacher belongs to a category of literatures known as written guides, which emulate and supplement the oral explanations needed to elucidate a meditation text. In this case, the text in question is the preliminary practice of the heart essence of the vast events. The heart essence of the vast expanse cycle of teachings that Longchenpa passed on to Jimelimba has become one of the most widely practiced in a Nimaba school. It contains a complete Vajrayana path, starting at the beginner stage with the preliminary practice. Then comes the main practice which has three principal parts, the generation phase, the perfection phase, and the great perfection. This chart explained the complete Vajrayana path, which include preliminary practice and main practice, Preliminary practice uh, including outer preliminaries and inner preliminaries. The main practice are uh, including the generation phase, the perfection phase, and the great perfection. The preliminary practices have an outer and an inner section. And, and our text is accordingly divided into two. The first part, the ordinary or external preliminaries deal with first, the freedom and advantages offered by human life. Second, impermanence. Third, the sufferings of sansara. Fourth, how karma, the principle of course and effect, applies to all our actions. Fifth, the benefits of liberation. And the sixth, how to follow a spiritual teacher. These elements are fundamental for a proper understanding of Buddhist values. They are general because they are the fundamental of Buddhism in general. The contemplations in this section can be practiced by anyone, Buddhist or not. The second part, which is the inner preliminaries, starts with taking refuge, learning to rely on the Buddha, the Dharma is his teaching, and the Sangha, the Buddhist community. This is the basis of a Buddhist commitment common to all traditions. Next comes the development of Bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. This attitude of unconditional love and compassion that seeks to bring all beings to the perfect freedom is the basis of the Mahayana. It is followed by practice to purify the effects 
of one's past negative actions and accumulate the positive energy necessary to progress on the path. This practice use more fully the techniques of visualization and mantra specific to the Vajrayana approach. Finally comes the Guru Yuga, uniting one's mind with the mind of the teacher. Guru Yuga is the very root of Vajrayana, where the purity of the link between the teacher and the disciple is the paramount importance. Also included here is the practice of pova or transference of consciousness, a shortcut method to enable those who are unable to pursue the path to the end to be liberated nonetheless at the time of death. For the practices in part two, it is necessary to have the guidance of a qualified teacher. Indeed, this is advisable for any spiritual practice. In pre-communist Tibet, almost all Tibetans considered themselves Buddhist and they would try to follow Buddhist ethics, make offering and recite some prayers and mantras. This remains largely true even in occupied Tibet today. A small number of those who are Buddhist in this general sense then take the decision to pursue the spiritual journey actively. And it is such people who would undertake this practice, usually repeating each element 100,000 times. Next come the practices of the generation and perfection phases. Culminating in a great perfection. In a Tibetan tradition, the inner journey is mapped with astonishing precision. For each stage of the practice, there are oral explanations and explanatory texts. Vajrayana is a science of the mind in which an expert teacher fully understands the significance of each experience and the solution for each error. This is Longchen Ningjik Nojo, which explained in the word of my perfect teacher. It is the preliminary practices. It is including outer preliminaries, and inner preliminaries. The outer preliminaries are including the freedoms and advantages offered by human life, impermanence of life, the suffering of samsara, and how karma, the principle, cause and effect applies to all, all actions, the benefits of liberation and how to follow a spiritual teacher. The inner preliminaries are including taking refuge, generating bodhicitta, purification through the practice of varasattva, accumulating merit through the offering of mandala and guru yuga. We we'll offer um, the teaching sessions every Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. The study is the word of my perfect teacher. 
a guide to the preliminaries for the heart essence of vast expanse from great perfection. You can register this session from Meetup. Kampu Sodagi said, in a current study of preliminary of great perfection, which is the study of the word of my perfect teacher, everyone is also required to participate the actual practice of meditation. Mainly what we meditate on is based upon Longchenpa's preliminary practice instructions of finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind. They are totally 94 sessions. So we also offer this launching Nintic Noto Meditation. It is available on our YouTube channel. So the launching Nintic Noto Meditation which is from Ronchen Rajan Rinpoche's preliminary practice instructions of finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind. We also cover outer preliminaries and inner preliminaries. The outer preliminaries are including freedoms and advantages, impermanence of life, suffering of samsara, cause and effects, spiritual teachers. The inner preliminaries are including taking refuge for immeasurables and generating bodhicitta. It is a little bit different um, than the book. So last, I would cover um, different angle to see the path of realizing the nature of mind. As you can see um, in the bottom, launching Nintic Nojo preliminary practices are very important. It cover outer preliminaries and inner preliminaries. For our study, we offer book study the word of my perfect teacher, which is available on Meetup, and analytical meditation, launching Nintic Nojo meditation, which is available on YouTube. From the preliminary practice, you can accumulate merit, purifying negative karma, and we were cultivating the bodhicitta and renunciation. And after that, we can start practice emptiness. We're using shamatha and vipassana. With the practice emptiness, the wisdom were emerging. And then with the oral pointing out instruction of master, we're starting realizing the nature of mind. In the beginning, we have some experience starting realize the nature of mind, and then we need continual practice to stabilizing the realization. I would mention the current very popular practice the mindfulness meditation actually is the subset of the techniques from the shamatha. It's like when we um, watch our breath or watch our sensations. There are techniques from the shamatha practice, but without the view study, like a preliminary practice study, only practice mindfulness will have very limited benefit. I know um, a lot of friends ask me why 
their meditation experience stuck. This is because the view in meditation practice are very, very important. With the view study combined with the meditation practice, your progress can be steady and grow quickly. That's all I want to cover in this session today. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. Ona Home, Roger Guru, Bama, Sitter Home.